Howdy folks, welcome back to BRG Photography. This is Ben, and this is another video where I'm just going to be covering one aspect of the retouching and editing process. And in this video, we're talking about extending the background so it fits the crop that you want. So what do I mean by that? So let's say for example that I want to post this on Instagram, and uh, Instagram has a portrait ratio of five by four. Now I shot this with a digital SLR vertically, which means I have a ratio of three by two, which is quite wide uh, compared to the uh, normal Instagram uh, photo and sometimes printing crops. So what I mean is if I go to my crop tool here and I go to the ratio of uh, four by or five by four and I rotate this and I say, okay, I want to put this on Instagram and as I realize, I have run out of space. Let me go ahead and turn snapping on here. Uh, I have ran, run out of space here. So no matter how I move this around, I'm always cutting off her fingers or her toes. So I need to extend that background. And let's go ahead and find a crop that we like. And maybe do something kind of like this, so like these angles, kind of have her in the center there. And we hit Enter. And there's our nice crop. But now we have to fill in the left and right sides. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I actually have four images that we're going to be working with. Uh, this is a very easy one. Then we're going to go to something a bit more complicated. We have some shadows that we have to preserve. Then something that has a more complex wall. And then a really complex image that we have to, you know, recreate these left and right sides so we can actually have the crop that we want. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and jump in and get started on our first image. So here's our seamless backdrop where it's quite... Uh, easy to uh, kind of extend the background here. So what I'm going to do now that we have our crop set is I'm going to select the uh, rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to just grab a little bit of the edge right around here and then I'm going to duplicate that layer then deselect and then using my move tool grab that layer and actually just stretch out the right side. Now I like to go a little bit beyond the edge because sometimes uh, if I go right to the edge, sometimes uh, you'll get this really thin one or two or three pixels just doesn't get filled in. So to prevent that, uh, you can turn uh, snapping off, but I'll just go a little bit past the edge just to make sure. And there you go, as you can see, and you see this bottom part kind of glitched out, but you can see here that it's actually filled in, but sometimes from uh, full size it doesn't fill in all the way but you can see right there we have a nice extended background if we do zoom in yeah the pixels do get a bit stretched out but at this distance and by the time you see it on social media or something like at this size fine so we can do the exact same thing on the other side here uh, grab my little marquee tool now this is a bit of a wider gap so you can Again, if you are stretching out a very thin portion you're gonna have more stretched out pixels if you go too far you know, it might, uh, you don't get that off, you don't get stretched out that much, but it might not um, line up or you might stretch out things that you don't want to stretch out. But I think in this case, like even going wide, it looks fine because here this kind of arm shadow kind of extends out a bit and the pixels do not look as stretched out. It looks really natural. And that's one easy way to quickly stretch out your seamless background. Now here, something very similar, a white wall. We go to our crop tool. We go to five by five, five by four, and we rotate this. And let's kind of find a nice crop that we kind of like that has our whole body in it. And we do something like this, maybe right there in the center. And okay, let's say I like that crop. Left side, that's going to be pretty easy. We're going to do the exact same technique we did before. Go ahead and grab my rectangular marquee tool. Let's just go ahead and grab this right here, duplicate that layer, deselect it, and just stretch it out to the edge. Perfect. Now this other side, we have this shadow that's going across that we need to preserve. So let's go ahead and do the same thing first. Let's go ahead and grab our rectangular marquee tool. And let's go ahead and grab kind of a bigger, maybe a little bit of bigger area because this is kind of a wide area we need to fill in. We're going to duplicate that, deselect it, use our move tool and grab and stretch it out to the edge. Now it looks okay except for this part right here where the shadow is bit not stretched out correctly. So we can fix that by having that layer selected. And we're gonna to go to our mesh warp tool. And what we need to do first, because we have this uh, line where the wall meets the floor, we wanna put an anchor point there, double click, to get this little anchor point. That way when we move these points down here, that doesn't move. And we can do, we're gonna 
pull this corner down and as you notice it does kind of curve so we're going to use these other little points to kind of use just to kind of get it straight to where it looks pretty nice you can kind of do different things here and because we have this anchored down it's not affecting that we think that looks good we hit apply and yeah there we go uh, it's a little got a little bit of curve at the end but you know you can you can tweak that and get it straight so there that's one way we can kind of fix those little shadows especially when you have straight shadows going across the shadows will not always uh, line up when you stretch them out so you are going to have to kind of warp them around a bit so that's another way to do that now let's look at something like this is a concrete wall and again, I want to crop this. Now, right now, this is not a very good crop because I'm cutting her off right at her knees. But even if I go into my five by four ratio here, and I say I want to do a crop, I want to crop right above her knees. I want to crop right kind of like above her knee, kind of the lower thigh. And that looks pretty good. And we still, gotta, we still have to fill in a little bit here. But this is actually not too bad. So. The difference with this one is that if I go in to my square marquee tool here, and let's just actually grab on this side here, and let's go and duplicate, deselect, and grab it. Now, because this is going to be quite small, uh, it's not too noticeable. Sometimes you'll notice that, especially when you have a textured image, if we start, let's go into extreme, if I start really stretching it out, you can see like it just looks kind of phony because we can tell that's been stretched out. Now, in this example, we can stretch it out because it's not really, we're not having to cover up too much. But instead of stretching it out actually, let's actually, what I actually want to do is actually just move it over and put it right next to it. Now, let's get kind of close here. So you can easily just come over here, put it right next to it, duplicate it. Now because, I guess we're not, so a little bit of a line looks like maybe. All right, now, but because you know, you can see right here it's not lining up because we just kind of put it right next to each other. So one way we can fix that is we just flip it around. I'm going to go ahead and flip horizontal. Boom, we flipped it around. Now it's been flipped horizontally. And I guess we still, yeah, affinity is weird like that. Like you can see like there's no line here. I can zoom all the way. There's no line. But when I zoom out like that, it shows like a weird line. There it goes away. Now, obviously with this technique, you can see we have some repeating patterns here, like this has been mirrored. And so in order to fix that, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna make a new layer and do something like a clone stamp brush, maybe at a 10% flow, 50% hardness. And we can just come in here and just kind of paint over some of the areas that we wanna hide. We can just do stuff like that. And, you know, come over here, maybe grab some parts over here especially with a wall that's kind of textured like this, it's pretty easy. Uh, so yeah, you can do something like this and that will really just kind of help uh, blend it in together so that you can also, and also hides that line that's not really there. But just by doing a little things like this, you can kind of help uh, hide the fact that you just mirrored this image. And you can do it like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And so with that technique, you can even just forego the whole uh, mirroring process and just go ahead and just clone stamp. Let's say, for example, I like this area here. I don't want this line. Uh, let's just go ahead and just start clone stamping, like just extending it all here. I'm just gonna go ahead and just, oops, gotta be careful that I'm actually on the line right here. And you just kind of do something like that. And you can just go ahead and paint it in. You can just paint in uh, the background you like. Now again, we are gonna have to do something about this um, repeating patterns we're gonna catch, but I'll show you how to fix that in a second, and it's gonna be exactly what we did before. Uh, we're just gonna make sure I don't grab her leg here. Okay, and maybe I don't like that line, so we can just get rid of that. And we're just gonna use our clone stamp tool just to, just to, uh, you know, maybe you can see with these patterns here, they're kind of the same. Let me just get rid of that clone stamp. This is really useful when you have like a thing like the, the concrete wall, even a brick wall. It's a little more ge uh, geometric. You know what? I don't like that line. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that line completely. And my computer keeps beeping at me because I'm pressing the wrong button. Uh, so yeah, something like this. And you know, normally, ideally, you know, people shouldn't be paying attention to the background as long as you've done it where it looks just good enough. Nobody's gonna be looking like, hey, you know, I think that background looks like those. This you just clone stamped it. 
well maybe you did but who cares right uh so like me look like that that looks fine you can't tell anything here maybe for example uh, because this was starting to get darker toward the edge and we reversed it it kind of getting started getting light again that's pretty easy right we're just gonna we can do an easy uh, curves maybe bring it down uh, invert that and just go to a brush and we can just kind of actually just start darkening up uh, right at the edge so it kind of keeps that feeling that it was getting darker toward the edge especially since the light is coming from the left side then it looks maybe a little bit more natural kind of helps sell it if we just kind of darken up more of the edge like that so you can see that it kind of does that kind of helps feel that thing of the light slowly falling off into the edge of the wall and there we have a nice crop um, all right so this is our final complex image we have here and um, we're going to be using the same techniques that we used earlier so again if I go to a crop and I select my five by four that I want to crop for Instagram. Uh, you can see that even if I, even with this much headroom, it's just not enough. Like I'm always cutting off something. So what I want to do is leave a little headroom, leave a little room in the bottom and just kind of do something. Maybe put her more in the center and do something like that. So that's a pretty good crop. I like that crop. Maybe I actually might uh, come down a little bit. Wait, why did I do that? I want to just come bring it down a little bit like that all right so that's a good crop um, this is gonna be actually not too difficult so let's take a look at the left side first Now the left side uh, is pretty simple because it's not too complex I mean there's no papers and things like that so what I'm going to make a brand new layer here and using my clone stamp tool I'm just going to probably start I'm gonna basically take this board here and put it over there so let me go ahead and start I'm gonna click right on this little corner right uh, about here and then I'm going to let's go ahead and make this 100% so I can see maybe start it something around like here kind of line it up with that line and then and I don't need to be at, I can be at a full here and then just paint paint that in now I can go a bit over because I can come back here and mask it out, uh, mask out later. But I don't need it to be too precise. This is that's the really good thing about complex backgrounds like this, or really messy backgrounds, is you don't have to be really too precise. Now we're gonna start over here at the floor. Let's maybe grab something like around here, and let's just kind of get that floor. Let's fix that floor. And again here you see we got this little line like that that's a pretty easy fix we can come over here with a low flow uh, clone stamp and maybe just kind of oops, just kind of hide that very easy and if we wanted to um, we can come over here and mask some of this off but you know it's not even really gonna be worth it maybe I want to make sure for example let's go ahead and make a mask really quick and using a paintbrush, uh, I guess a black paintbrush here and on the mask. And we can kind of make sure we mask that line back in. Make sure that this kind of like fake line we have here is looking good. Especially up there, we kind of missed it. And using like, just like we did with that gray wall before, um, you know, you can do your clone stamp brush, your clone stamp tool kind of just you know blend in some of this stuff here that looks fine right I mean yeah these patterns are repeating like that little patch of wood and that little patch of wood that's pretty easy just you know hide that so usually I'll look for you know things that I don't like or things I can really really notice right off the bat where I can say you know what that looks like it's been repeated so just come over here fix that fix that you know fix here maybe fix that and look at that. I mean, no one's going to be bothered looking at that. Now, this side, we're going to have to kind of do something that's kind of similar to our last one, is we're going to actually mirror an image. So let's go ahead and select our background layer again here. And this time, because we have a pretty big gap, I'm going to actually grab a pretty big gap like this. And we are going to grab all this, and we are going to duplicate that, deselect it, and we are going to flip it. I'm going to flip it and then we're going to move it kind of basically let me go ahead and turn this off basically right around like here like that all right now 
here we obviously have some paper that's been uh you can see it's pretty easily recognizable it's mirrored but just like before we can make a uh we can just start clone stamping to fix it if we want we can make a brand new layer to do specifically that and maybe for example uh, I want to hide this you just come in here and you can start clone stamping uh, you have this little double fold here maybe I don't like that why don't we just kind of like fake this page is continue over to here and we do something like that and you know again was this kind of complex background nobody's gonna bother paying attention to that you just want to kind of get it where it's not too noticeable and it still looks like pretty good like that you can see like that looks like two pieces of paper uh, maybe like this little thing in the middle we just get rid of that pretty easily and if you really really picky you can see the text is backwards why don't we just get rid of the whole text then right then there's no problem there um, just like this this really just depends on actually how much effort you want to put into it um, you know you may not even care this is just if you're doing something where you know you, you really want to make it look kind of nice and not anything weird um, something like that again we have this kind of weird distracting you know like what do you call those Ro roacher Ro Reuter, <laughs> the tests where they show you ink blops kind of looks like that all right we can fix that uh, the music again again same thing this is all it really is involved here is just coming in here uh, clone stamping things. Maybe he's picking our um, this little what do you call it? My favorite in painting brush tool. Pretty easy to get rid of lines like that. Anything that's going to kind of help you recognize the fact that it wasn't mirrored. And same thing up here. Pretty simple. We can just come and just kind of start this little green tape or whatever they've got going on here. Looks like it didn't go to the edge. Um, yeah, you could even just get rid of this whole page here. And just do something like that that way it really helps it not look like it's just been a mirrored thing maybe just create a new paper edge maybe just make a really nice edge like that pretty easy stuff i mean this is just something that i think sometimes you just don't know how to approach it but if you have a few techniques like that uh it looks fine and maybe like here i don't want that you know i don't want that little thing so let's just do that maybe even mix it up here we'll do where the text would be like that. There you go. So I think like um, I think you get what I did. Um, again, you can, if I really wanted to, let's just maybe extend the text more like this and just do something like, you know, make our own little, make our own kind of like page. This is like a new page here, like that. Kind of looks. Maybe that looks okay. Right, looks right. Looks good. Right, looks fine. Uh, so, same thing here. You know, we've got some patterns that are kind of repeating here. We're just gonna come and just like you know paint over it, just like that. Easy peasy, right? And you know, no one's gonna be any of the wiser. No one's gonna really care. No one should be paying attention if you get a really great model in a shot like this. And boom, perfect. Right. So we basically created all that. And you know, now that we know we did it, it's pretty easy to be like, oh yeah, I can see that. But if you don't know, looks fine, looks great. And we take all these images and now they are perfectly cropped, ready to go to Instagram or social media or be printed out or whatever. So uh, that's it. I hope that was uh, useful. I hope it showed you a few different ways that you can kind of uh, fix the background or extend your background like that. And uh, that was all. And so I guess thank you very much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next videos. All right, bye.